Hello guys, my name is Neil and I work as a threat researcher at Security Joe's. Today I want to share with you a sample that we found during threat hunting on our client's network. When we conduct a hunt to respond to an incident, we need to identify the malware family and quickly assess the risk to the network. Usually we need to unpack the file on the spot. So this video will be about unpacking of a spec protected malware. There are some automatic solutions that will unpack the file for us. I prefer the manual way for the reason that when we deal with ASPEC or UPX packers, it's very straightforward. And at the bottom line, we just want to find the tail jump. I won't go to, into many details about the tail jump and how can we find it. There is a better workshop that talks and teaches exactly that. It's on our channel conducted by our senior threat researcher, Felipe. So let's talk about ASPEC. What is it and how can we identify it? ASPEC is a packer similar to UPX packer. It compresses the content of the file and by that protects it from reverse engineering. When we talk about this kind of packers, we mean that like in UPX, it replaces some parts of the sample in memory. And that's why this kind of packer contains the R flag in the ASPEC section. We begin with a quick overview of our malware, just to understand some of the techniques that it uses. We'll study the static properties of the file and get a better understanding about the file sections and the file entropy level. At the final stage, we'll unpack the file and use the strings to identify the malware family. Those are the tools that uh, I'm going to use today. Uh, Detected Easy, PE Studio, PBear, 7-zip, CFF, and at the end, we're going to debug the file. So let's Joe's. Okay, this is my lab, and I want to understand if this file is a legit file or a threat. So there are many kinds of threats, and if this sample is a malware, we want to know what are the capabilities of this malware. Is it a rat? Uh, it could be a crypto miner. Maybe this sample found before as part of a ransomware attack. So let's begin. Uh, this is a zip file, so I will extract the file here. And we have inside a Telegram installer. So at first sight, it looks strange because Telegram uh, installers usually use the EXE extension. And uh, I never saw a Telegram that used MSI. Let's check the file properties. Also a red flag are the Chinese letters that uh, we see here. It's unusual and uh, it doesn't supposed to look like that. So uh, we can take the hash of this file to VirusTotal to see maybe we have something there. Um, let's put it on uh, in PStudio. I will take the hash and place it in virus total. So obviously it's a malicious file. Uh, most of the detections here are generic, but I see uh, the word dropper pop here and here and here. So it's interesting. Uh, what what this file is uh, going to drop because it's a, an msi uh, file it's like a, a wrapper for uh, other executables so we can conclude that we have inside more files so we can use again 7-zip to investigate the file let's open the archive and from everything i see here the cap file is the most uh, interesting uh, part for me. It's like, uh, it looks like the next stage of the attack. So uh, we're going to take this file out and continue with the investigation. The cap file, it's an archive file and uh, it usually contains uh, several compressed files. Let's see what we have inside. Inside here, we can see a weird looking DLL, but we can also see 
it looks like uh, the legit Telegram application. Uh, so when we see something like that, uh, I think about uh, DLL side loading. There is a good possibility that uh, this DLL will uh, side load by the Telegram process, but uh, I'm not sure of that uh, right now. There is also a possibility that uh, this DLL will load to RAM in other ways. And the real telegram is like a decoy to fool the EDR or the AV uh, to look like uh, parallel to the malicious uh, code and uh, content. The attackers want to use uh, some kind of a legit process to masquerade and uh, hide the malicious code. So uh, we don't, uh, we can't know uh, for now. Uh, let's uh, extract this uh, DLL and continue with uh, our investigation. At this point, we can begin with our static investigation. When I begin a static investigation, I like to use CFF Explorer. We get the result that uh, this file is packed with ASPEC version 2.12, but uh, tools sometimes wrong. And uh, the best uh, practice will be to compare the results with uh, one more tool. So I will use uh, die. In detected easy, we can check the entropy of the file. We can see that this file is not uh, it's not severely packed. There are some sections on the code that are packed and some not. The next step for me in this uh, situation will be to examine the sections with uh, PBER. Okay, upon using PBER, we can see that the sections are not aligned. They are the, the sections on disk and on memory take uh, different uh, amount of uh, space. So it's a good indication that the file is packed. Also, as we talked before, we can see that uh, we have the right uh, read and write uh, execute flags in the ASPEC uh, section. So by now we have the attack flow. Uh, we see the technique that uh, the attacker use. They use some kinds of uh, compression uh, methods, probably to evade detection and uh, fool the EDR. We started with a zip file and then we unzip it uh, inside the hide uh, inside the MSI file. They hide uh, a cab file uh, with a malicious DLL. So it all comes down to this DLL and it's probably the next stage. So let's unpack it. To unpack this uh, malware, I'm going to use a 32-bit uh, debugger. So let's put the file in the debugger. This is the entry point of the file. And uh, right in the beginning, we can see the push AD uh, instruction. So in the... Uh, this unpacking uh, procedure, we're going to care about two instructions, the push ID and the pop ID. The push ID is an instruction to save the current state of all the registers. And uh, that state is going to be saved uh, on the stack. Why this malware does that? Uh, the reason for this action is to save the state before the rest of the code uh, runs. So when the file runs, a lot of, let's say, uh, garbage will fill up the registers and we need the, this clean state to go back to. So at some point, the instruction pop ad will recover the clean state. So we want to reach the pop ad. Uh, this is the tail jump. So let's put a breakpoint at uh, this uh, first call. I already put it and uh, run it till it uh, hit it. So now when I hit this call, I want to follow it uh, on dump. I will uh, follow it, put it on uh, dump one, and I want to put uh, a breakpoint. Uh, I will use a hardware uh, access breakpoint. 
and I want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, why we put here a breakpoint and why a hardware uh, breakpoint. So uh, we put the breakpoint to find the exact moment in which the stack is going to be modified. And we use the outwell breakpoint because we are dealing uh, with the stack. Uh, on the stack, we can't use the regular breakpoints like the software breakpoints. Okay, so now I'm going to run uh, the code and uh, reach the tail jump. As you can see, the, we reached the instruction, uh, the mini jump after the pop uh, AD instruction so i'm going to take this uh, mini jump let's uh, step over it and we reach the push the push return it's basically the tail jump the push is going to add the address to the stack and the return is going to take this address and redirect the execution to this address so I'm going to step over the push and I'm going to step, uh, step in to the return. And boom, this is the unpack code. At this point, I want to dump uh, this code. So to make a dump, I'll use the plugins. I will dump uh, this code, dump it. Let's save it to the desktop. And we have our dump, but uh, this file is not uh, yet ready. We need to fix the import table of this file and uh, we'll use the plugins uh, Celia to do that. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's get the imports and uh, fix dump. Let's choose our uh, dump file. And as you can see, we managed to re rebuild the import table of this file. So now we can use it. We can uh, continue our investigation. Uh, I want to compare between those two files. So we have our uh, original malware and we have our uh, fixed dump file. And you can see the difference. The size of the dump is almost twice as uh, the original uh, file. And also we can see that this malware was written in C++. Okay, guys, to finish our investigation, let's identify the attackers. I used the IOCs that I extracted from this uh, malware and found this uh, article. This article talks about uh, a group named APTQ27 or a uh, golden eye dog. And when I uh, scroll down, I found exactly our uh, case, the Telegram Chinese version uh, .msi that will uh, drop at the end of the, uh, the malware operation, this uh, DLL, uh, this malicious DLL, and this DLL will sideload by the Telegram uh, launcher. So we can read this uh, article and uh, obviously at the end we have the IOCs that uh, we can use and continue the hunt on our network to see if we miss something. But uh, for me, uh, I still lack uh, information. Uh, I want to understand better this uh, malware and uh, because I see that there is al already a research about it, uh, it was from here, it was easy to find uh, other articles. So I found uh, this article, it's uh, a better one, more uh, directly talk to, talking about uh, this group and their attack uh, methods. So this article, they mentioned seven attack methods uh, that uh, this uh, group uses. And uh, if I scroll down to infection chain number seven, we can see exactly our case. Uh, the user yeah, visit a fake uh, website, uh, download the fake uh, Chinese uh, Telegram uh, installer, and upon uh, running it, it will sideload this uh, DLL, complete 
the normal installation, the user will get uh, an icon on the desktop. So at this point, if you ask the user, uh, it will tell you that it's a great software and it's working perfectly. But uh, at the background, uh, it's going to run a payload and uh, we have our uh, malware or uh, another malware named ghost threat. So now I want to know what is it. Okay, so it's a remote access tool and uh, it's not telling much. I need uh, more information about it. So I want to understand the functionality of uh, this threat. And uh, upon reading the capabilities of this threat, uh, we understand that uh, isolation of the host now, it's not enough. The user needs to change his uh, all passwords and to multi-factor authentication and also log out from uh, all of his account because it's probably an info stealer. And uh, also we can see that the attacker is using a, a remote shell. So it could, it could use, uh, drop more malware. So and now we really understand the risk to the network. Uh, but uh, at this point, I want to stop. Uh, this video was about uh, malware unpacking, not uh, threat uh, research. So I hope you enjoyed the content. Thank you for watching. And you can visit our website. And uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, share with us and uh, we'll respond. Thanks, guys.